Welcome back. Well, as a society, we're often taught it's impossible to be happy in our adult lives without a partner. That to be truly happy, you must be in a committed relationship. From movies to romantic novels and even social media, everywhere we look, we're constantly shown examples of why we need to find romantic love. But are we so bent on coupling up and getting married that the benefits of being single are forgotten. For today's agenda, I'm joined by relationship expert Melissa Ferrari and author Kerry Sackville. Good morning. Welcome to you both. Hello. Hi. How are we? So great. <laughs> right. So great. Single and fabulous. Kerry, um, I guess there's a common assumption, isn't it, that if you're not in a relationship, um, you're lonely yeah. and you're unhappy. Yeah. And yet you can, of course, be in a relationship and still be lonely and unhappy. Absolutely. And I think anybody who's been in, in a difficult relationship or an unhappy relationship knows you can be much, much more lonely waking up next to the wrong person or waking up next to a person who, with whom you're not connected than being by yourself. So, so. take the floor. Tell us, about the, <laughs> tell us the benefits of being single. Look, I've been single on and off for the past five and a half years since the end of a very long marriage. And it was really difficult at first because I hadn't been single really since I was 16 years old. But I can tell you now, things that, that I enjoy, do you have some time? Things like waking up in the morning in my own bed and I can spread eagle across the bed. There's nobody there but the cat and I can push her off if I want to. You know, nobody waking me up snoring or clearing their throat or, or, you know, having to get up with the alarm. Things like being able to spend my own money and make my own decisions about where I go, what I do, what I buy. Um, being able to eat cereal for dinner if the kids are out with no one else to worry about. Um, having full control over the remote. You know, how great is that? <laughs> um, and just managing my own life and my own decisions and, and really, apart from my kids, being able to put myself first. And, and that's a really, really rare thing for a woman, I yeah, think. Yeah, empowering, I imagine. Very empowering. Why, though, Melissa, is there, is there this stigma about being single? And, of course, we're talking blokes as well as women. It's, it's not just a female thing. Well, I think we are wired to be tethered to another or we are wired to be a couple. And so there's a whole lot of science behind that. But the thing about relationships is that when you are in a relationship, particularly one that you want to create that's good, it takes resources. It takes inner resources and can sometimes even be stressful because you do have to consider another. So I think that exhilaration of actually being on your own, it kind of reduces that stress in one way around not having to worry about which restaurant and are you happy with the restaurant that I chose and all of those things that does happen in a couple. For me, ultimately, you know, being in the industry I'm in, being a psychotherapist and a couple therapist, you know, I do see a lot of people who come to this place that decide, you know, I have had some bad experiences with relationships. And that's not always the reason, but quite often people say the stress of that or not being in a good one is just too much for me. And so for a little while or even a decision for the rest of my life, whatever it might be, is that I'm going to be on my own. So is there any truth to the notion that we're we're not meant to tread this earth on our own, that we are meant to have someone by our side? Yes, there is truth in it. We are, we are wired for connection. We come out into the world as babies and babies, the first thing they're doing is reaching out. That doesn't change. We're always reaching out. And so you do need to have someone that reflects back to you goodness, happiness and all that secure kind of stuff. And not everybody gets that. Mm. And so I think being in a relationship that's not happy really can stress you out a whole lot more than being alone but if you find that good relationship it can be so nourishing can I, yeah can I just say I think I think that's absolutely right but I think there are a lot of different kinds of connections mm. and we are wired for connection but you know connection can come from your children from your family members from your friends from all sorts of other relationships in your life and not necessarily just from one romantic partner yeah there are certain things you don't get from other people um, you know, it's, there, there are certain things that you miss as a single person. It's, you know, you don't have sex on tap, but then a lot of married people don't have sex on tap. Mm -hmm. But the other kinds of connections are, are there in spades. You know, I'm certainly not short of, of, um, of meaningful relationships in my life. Does, does society um, make you feel alienated being single? Yeah, I think 
I think that society is, is much more accepting of people now who are a single, particularly after being divorced or separated. I think there's a lot of understanding about how people might come out of relationships and want to be alone. I think there is probably still a stigma attached to being single permanently, having never been in a long relationship or, or never been married. And I think that's really unfair because it's an absolutely valid life choice and, and a lot of people choose um, to remain single for, for reasons or, or raise children by themselves. Mm. So I think we're I think we're edging more towards that, but I think there's still a way to go with the whole never been in a long-term relationship. We asked you at home what you love about being single, and here's what some of you have had to say. They're great, and a lot of them mirror what you've been saying, Kerry. <laughs> Louise says, no snoring. <laughs> yeah. This one from Margaret, the dog is allowed to sleep on the bed. Jackie <laughs> says, I can have cereal for dinner oh. if I want. <laughs> I'm in charge of the remote. I can be tidy or untidy, and I only have to answer to me. Sending love to Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> and Nick says, leaving the toilet toilet seat up, soap on the shower floor and not in the soap tray, having the same bed sheets on for two weeks and leaving a pizza box on the coffee table for at least three days without anyone saying anything. And finally Blair says, eating a whole block of cheese while in my undies with no one judging me. Yes. Oh, there are plenty of positives there, Melissa. Absolutely. And, and it's true, there are plenty of positives for being on your own, you know, that very experience of not having to ask another, what do you want and am I am I taking good care of you you know you can really use that energy to take care of yourself for some you know it's a great time for self-reflection to really know what do I want and when you don't have that other person you have to consider you can really think about where do I want to go in my life mm. and where do I where do I want to head what do I want but when you are with someone else there's a whole lot more to consider but I do think still that we are wired for that romantic connection I know we can have relationships with others, but romantic connection is always lovely. And from what I can gather, Kerry, I don't mean to get too personal, but you're not ruling out entering into another relationship, no, but you're in no. a period where you're really um, re-evaluating your independence and celebrating it. Yeah, and I think, I think I'm in a position where if, if something comes along, great, but if it doesn't, I'm perfectly fine. And I think that's actually the best place from which to, to look at new relationships anyway. You don't want to be frantically searching for a relationship mm -hmm. because you make bad decisions mm. when, when you're desperate. Of course. And just in closing, Melissa, um, your advice to people who perhaps find themselves in this situation and uh, are not enjoying it and, and, and seeing the value that Kerry, perhaps aren't at that stage yet where Kerry's yeah. at. Well, use the time for self-reflection. I think even going in with uh, into a good therapy and really analysing, you know, what do I want? What am I looking for? And what I find is that when people do start to get into that more confident place and really realise there's advantages to this, that person really kind of um, appears and there's something quite interesting about acceptance. So self-acceptance, being able to acknowledge, you know, this is fun. I can go on my bucket list and do all of those things that I've never been able to do and I can just decide to do it and I don't have to consult anybody. I can decide what hair colour I love and all of that kind of I can eat a things. whole block of cheese by in myself. Your <laughs> in my undies. Most nights, that's where you'll find me. There's... <laughs> <laughs> Power to you, Kerry. Yeah, Sackville. cheese. Good for you. I don't Absolutely. share my cheese with you. No. <laughs> and great advice as always, Melissa. Thank you. There you go. There's one for all the single ladies. Yes. Sylvia and Carl. What do you eat, Georgie, when you're, when you're by yourself and no one's watching? Oh, that's easy. Chocolate. Yeah. Do you? Mm. I, go into the, I actually go into the pantry and close the door. Oh, yes. <laughs> Turn the light out. <laughs> Just a little bit of alone time. How good is that? Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's the yeah. best company ever, my chocolate. Uh, <laughs> I think you'll find you're the best company ever, Georgie Gardner. <laughs> Along with a jar of peanut butter and a spoon. Thank you very much. Hello. Hey, Dad, where's Mum gone? Oh, she's in the pantry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's having some quiet time. <laughs> I do. you got to do it.